Ming Lava, welcome to MITB Special Program Perspectives. For today, we have invited our special guest of honor, Xia Wu Chen. Ming Lava Xia, thank you for joining at Synthix Show. So for this week, we are going to continue to discuss about the powerhouse of India, which is the continuation of last week. All right. So for this week, let's talk about the economic condition. So could you explain about the economic condition of India? The Indian economy is growing quite well. You know, in the, in the first quarter of year 2023, it grew by <clears throat> more than 6%. Right? So India doesn't have to do anything special to become the world leading economy. Right? Even uh, because uh, at this point of time, investment, investment in India as a share of GDP is the highest at this point of time. So when you have, you know, based on the fundamental economic theory, if you have a higher investment, you'll end up having a higher GDP in the future. Yeah, so, so Indian economy will continue to grow. So even if it grows, you know, not even a, right now this year 6%, but slightly below that, uh, the prediction is that, you know, India will overtake the economy of the European Union by the middle of the century. And Indian economy will even become larger than the United States by the year 2075. So that is, you know, India can become number one or number two economy in the world by then. Mm -hmm. So that is really uh, amazing. You know, that prediction was made by Goldman Sachs. So could you guide us through the historical transformation? Yeah, in the, in the, in the, 90, in the 1700s, yeah, 1700, 16th century, Indian economy is probably the largest in the world, mm -hmm. right? So the economy began to decline after India became the colony of the uh, Britain, yeah. So and plus, they you know they they in the in the 90s also they have a series of uh, upsets like the banking crisis and you know at the grow at the extra low level one percent and all this thing. Since then, you know, uh, especially after the Modi uh, Prime Minister Modi's election in 2014, yeah, it has gathered speed and is now growing uh, quite well. You know, growing at uh, above five percent uh, rates is really good. Now, you know, uh, India accounts for nearly four percent of the global GDP. You know, it's the same as uh, China, like uh, twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. So, could you explain particularly about the infrastructure? Yeah, in order to develop, you think infrastructure is needed to get the economy running smoothly, right? So, India has been investing a lot in the infrastructure, especially the transport infrastructure. They have ex extend, they have expanded. Uh, the, the, the road network, they have expanded the railway networks, they have expanded the number of airports. So, you know, so that the logistics and all these things become super easy for the businesses. So that is one of the key uh, infrastructure investment. Plus, they have the, you know, uh, for example, like there, I want to mention something. For example, their road network is about, you know, 40 times the size of the roads in Myanmar. You know, India itself is not 40 times as big as Myanmar. India is like uh, about three times or four times as big as Myanmar. But their road network is about 40 times as more number of roads than in our, our country itself. Right? So that's one thing that I want to highlight. And plus the, you know, the other way, the digital infrastructure. They have the nearly 1 billion uh, broadband connection. Right? Uh, and plus the, you know, oh, they do everything uh, in the last week we talked about the digital uh, public infrastructure. Yeah, so they, they have the triangular thing of, you know, ID system and payment system and plus digital locker where you store your information. Yeah, so this three thing, you know, they, they, they have invested a lot. So it's very easy for the people, the people in need to receive welfare payments as well. So that, that's really good. And if you, even if you talk about the energy, India has added more solar energy in the world than any other country other than the United States and China, after the India was adding the most uh, solar energy, the most energy out of solar in last year. So, apart from this infrastructure, I think manufacturing and services also play before their role. So, could you make explanation on these sectors? Yeah, in terms of the services, you know, India is a quite a you know a unique economy because the you know services. Is a large sector in India. They, in fact, for the Indian exports, they account for like forty percent of all the exports. You know, in Myanmar, most of the exports are products like agriculture and all these things, or CMP uh, clothing and all these things. In India, forty percent is the, of the exports are services. You know, if when you talk about the outsourcing, you know, IT outsourcing, digital outsourcing, uh, yeah, that that other things are all done by Indian big companies, right? Infosys or Wipro or whatever. These are the you know the major the, the biggest outsourcing. Uh, company in the world. Yeah, so these are led by Indians. 
Yeah, so that is, that is, uh, that is one thing, yeah. Uh, and then the, in terms of the manufacturing, uh, India is traditionally slightly weak in manufacturing compared to, you know, China. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that they are competitive, but they, 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 you know, comparatively speaking, they are of the similar sizes. Yeah, so they are, they are quite weak. So Prime Minister Modi, they give the incentive called, you know, uh, production link incentive. So the more you produce, the more you get incentive from the government. So with that structure, a number of industries have improved, especially, I mean, think about pharmaceutical industry, right? India have a lot of, you know, uh, what is that? Generic medicines that, you know, we, we consume in here. And plus, you know, uh, nowadays, even mobile phones and all these things, you know, how, how many percent, oh, you know, 7% uh, of the iPhone handsets are now assembled, being assembled in India. Yeah, so India is uh, developing in all sectors of the economy. Mm -hmm. So, how about the banking and capital market aspects? Yeah, banking, you know, well, the, the banking system is quite clean, clean up, and corporate debt is also low. You know, and the Indian, the Indian government, they don't allow the foreign investments in local banks, so that the government can control in terms of any, you know, capital crisis or whatever. And plus, you know, India has a lot of foreign reserves, just like China, so they can make the currency more stable. Right, then the more the richer you are, you can make your currency stronger. Yeah, so India and China, they they have that uh, luxury, you know, and uh, and plus the in terms of the uh, stock market, capital market, stock market, you know, recently about six months ago, there's a major attack, short sellers attack the Indian stock market, uh, focusing on Adani Group. Yeah, now it has stabilized already, so which means they have gone through that crisis and they are stronger uh, than previous. Mm -hmm. So, how about the economic landscapes of India differ from that of China? Well, in, the, in terms of, you know, economy, well, obviously they are trying to develop, both countries are trying to develop the economy. But at the same time, the system of government and the system of management is different. India is a democratic country. China is a, you know, uh, socialist version, socialist communist type of version of a country, right? So, the West, US and the EU see the China as a competitor. India, they see it as more some 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 some. Uh, India, they see it as a country that they want cooperation from. So, in some sense, you know, they see India a little bit more. India more positively compared to China. Maybe I I I I get it down to I you know is I think it boils down to the language. You know, because if you if you and I can speak the same language, we have more positive view of each other. If we speak if we speak different language, you know, the view we we have misunderstanding. So Indians speak English, most of the leaders and all these things. China is not that China they look, they do, but the majority of the population in India they speak English. So it's quite, you know, it's quite easier to go, to get at a level where we can they can cooperate with each other. That's one thing, you know. The 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 in terms of the poll poll and survey, you know, 85, 84, 80, nearly eighty five percent of the res, respondents view China as the you know, a little bit. Unfavorable as a competitor, whereas India, they only view twenty-seven percent of the global population view the India as the uh, competitor. Mm -hmm. So, extracting the journeys of lessons from the journeys of India. So, what kinds of valuable knowledge can we gain? Okay, the first thing is that you're going to make the economy stronger. You know, only when you're rich, you can stand tall in this world. You know, it's like the being a rich person and a poor person. A rich person has a certain standing. So the economy got to be stronger, right? As long as our economy is poor, we'll always be, you know, we cannot be, we cannot stand tall in this world. There, there's a, in this world, there's one thing. The other one is a, a high command of English. If you want to reach, if you want to work, competing with a global professionals, you need to have a very good command of English. Else, nobody will employ you. So our level of English education, English is a second language. It has to go up. You cannot stay here. And plus, educational system. Right, our educational system, our university, the biggest university is like ranking 6,500. You know, the Singapore University are nearly top 10 already in the world. So we need to move up our educational level as well. And plus the, our IT infrastructure. And yeah, so we need to get it done. And also, you know, uh, India have a saying or a, a phrase called Juga, uh, which is, you know, getting things done by hook or by, I don't want to say by crook, getting, the, getting things done. Anyway, you must get the things done. So they're trying to have a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, so, you know, you are, it's too difficult. Or let other people do it. 
Less the subsequent people do is not like that. They want to get the things done and get things accomplished. So that mentality is uh, important. Mm -hmm. So to summarize our discussions, what conclusion can be drawn? Well, we have done about China already. We have done about two two parts of the India already. So uh, there is no doubt about that, that that we have fallen so so far behind Myanmar as a country and Myanmar population and Myanmar people. So so we have to work really hard, you know, to at least even catch up with them. And plus, you know, we need to have skills that we can compete with them in the new economy. That means, you know, the IT skills, uh, English skills, you know, the, 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 the presentation, negotiation, all these type of communication skills so that we can be at par with that. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for your information. Thank you. thank you again for joining us in this show. Thank you. You have been watching MITV special program Perspective. Thanks for being with us.